Some people don't understand why I keep on talking about COVID. And as far as they're concerned, it's all behind them. This is in the past. What is the big issue? Well, it's because I know some stuff that is coming through research for a number of years that makes it inevitable that we've got a serious problem on our hands. No matter how mild or how casual the narrative may be, one of the things that I was shared with by one of the authors on this paper, which was finally approved again, they started this process in 2022, but one of the authors who I had interviewed in the past, Carla Brogner, reached out and said, we have got this over the line. And it has now been fully published with some reservations um, by two of the reviewers because it is such a serious implication that we have never seen before. In case you don't understand, SARS-CoV-2, the virus that caused COVID, bacteriophage is probably the term that you've never quite heard. And essentially, it is viruses that infect bacteria. Normally, human viruses don't infect bacteria, and viruses or bacteriophages that can infect bacteria don't infect humans. But this is something very unusual about SARS-CoV-2. Now, I'm not going to go in great detail in this paper because I hope to be able to get Carlo at some point soon to discuss the findings and the challenges and so on. But it led me to the point about the fact that it seems as though people wanted to figure out how to kill a dinosaur by creating a dinosaur and then killing it. Makes perfect sense, doesn't it? That's the story of Jurassic Park. It did not end very well for the people involved. So let's just take a moment and listen to Jay Bhattacharya, who is now the lead for the NIH in the USA. Listen to what he says at some points, just to clarify a few things that he says. Let's listen to what he had to say. But I will say this, what we have done is we've done, we, including the NIH, has uh, supported a research program with the utop utopian vision of preventing all pandemics. The, the, the way the research program has worked is that we fund people, EcoHealth Alliance once upon a time, to go out into the wild places, partner with foreign countries, including China, go out in the wild places, collect the pathogens in the bat caves or wherever. Picking up bat droppings. Right, so that we can catalog all of the viruses and pathogens out there. Right. Even if there's, it's very unlikely that many humans will come in contact with those things. Bring those viruses and pathogens into, into labs, often in city centers, often not necessarily in high, high uh, uh, security environments. Do research on them to see if it's easy to manipulate them and cause them to become more transmissible among humans. And the idea is... If we can identify those viruses and pathogens that are more, more likely to make the leap into humans, then we can prepare in advance. We can create uh, right. you know, uh, anti, uh, you know, vaccines and antivirals or whatever before they make the leap in the population so that when they make the leap, we are already ready. ready. I'll pause that right there. And that is the story almost of Jurassic Park. That's what they thought they would do with dinosaurs, you know, bring them back, use the DNA, link it to frog DNA, create a beast and then control it. Didn't end well, did it? Well, the characteristics that we are seeing in terms of that capability to infect bacteria suggest, and I say suggest carefully, that this was not a natural evolution of the virus. Let's hear what else uh, Dr. Bhattacharya had to say. Right. The, there's two major problems with that. One of, of, of what it working, which it doesn't, and then one of its safety, which it's not. First, if you make a, a study of a pathogen you found in the wild places that have never really ever infected humans before, and you create vaccines or whatnot to, to combat it, when they actually make the leap, evolution still works, right? It's not going to be the same virus you cataloged. These viruses evolve, evolve very quickly all the time. And so you have a snapshot from 10 years ago when you went to the Batcave, but you don't know what they look like now. 
and the vaccines and things that you've produced to try to prepare, you've never tested them on human populations before because no human had ever gotten the disease. Okay. So this is a foolhardy way to you pretend to yourself that we've protected ourselves against a pandemic when we haven't. I'll pause here again before he makes his second point, because he's quite right. They found the back droppings, found an unusual coronavirus in bats. They brought it back to the labs to study it, to prepare for the potential that this virus in the cave, in the wild, in the bats would then become a pandemic. They would argue that they were right because it did. Other people argue that it only happened because you were fiddling around with it in the first place. Let's hear what else he had to say. Second, the actual conduct of this research is very dangerous. And I think it's very likely that the COVID pandemic was the result of this kind of research agenda. Because it's not possible to guarantee, even in high security labs. Are, are you prepared to say that the preponderance of evidence now is that COVID arose from a leak from gain of function of a gain of function lab in Wuhan. Yes. Is that the position? That's my that's my position. Okay. And I believe it's also the position of, of various intelligence agencies of the government as well as uh, other governments as well that have looked into this. So he said it. He said what many people have been thinking for a long time. And now there are some people who are pretty stuck in the narrative and they will go back to the original papers that clearly made no sense about natural origin, and they will say that, well, it clearly came from the wet market, uh, even though we can't find any animals to trace that brought it there. Nobody was sick en route to bring these animals to the wet market, and they are stuck in the narrative because the implication of what is being said is so serious that nobody really wants to think about it. Because as I said, what you have to remember is that if you are fiddling around with it and you're trying different things with the virus to manipulate it, to see, okay, what happens if it can do this? What can, happens if it can do this? What happens if it can do this? Well, maybe somebody was saying, well, what happens if it can infect bacteria? And how do we do it so that it does? Now we've got a problem because it means that based on that scientific point, and just so you remember, I'll, I'll not go th I've not gone through this article in detail as yet. The point being is that on multiple fronts, they use three different routes of analysis and found that it appears that the virus is able to replicate in bacteria. This is not normal. But what it means is that I don't know how we're going to get rid of it because bacteria are an essential part of how we interact with our environment. They're all in our gut, they're in our skin, they're in our mouth, they're in our sinuses. What happens if it gets stuck in these bacteria and cause a problem? That's where we are at the moment. And so you will understand why I have this beast looking Jurassic creature on the thumbnail, because this is what I think has happened. Somewhere, somebody had the bright idea to create a T-Rex. They didn't have enough safety in the enclosure, and now it's out and about running around the population and everybody's pretending they don't know why people are getting sick and dying. My advice is to stay close to the science, especially those who are willing to challenge the narratives, because you are better off being prepared rather than being completely naive about what can be happening and then being hit down the line. There's still a lot of work to do, but we'll keep on searching for answers. Have a good evening.